Hey guys, up till now in the series, you've seen me use these functions, but we've not explicitly covered them in a video talking about them. So this is that video. So here we have collect, I'm sorry, clear, collect, collect, and clear. And these are typically the order in which you'll do them. There's going to be different use cases that are going to creep up to where, you know, you're going to want to use all of them or, or maybe just clear, collect. Clear collect is probably going to be 80% of the time. Collect, maybe another 20%. And occasionally you might use clear, depending on what it is that you're trying to do or the desired output. Let's just show you the behavior from just the user experience and then we'll dig into the code and talk about it a little bit more. So over here on the right, the far right, I have a table that's gonna house this collection which has two columns and I'm simply providing age and I'm simply asking the question of is 21. So I'm going to hold down the alt key, press, press collect, clear collect anyway, and I now have this collection. And you can see I got age, I got 23, I got 29, so on and so forth. And it says is 21, is 13, you know, greater than 21? No. Is 23 greater than 21? Yeah. And so this is letting me know if this is 21. So the other thing to look at is the collect. So if I hold down the alt key again and I press collect, it's just going to add more data to the existing. So I'm not clearing and collecting. I'm simply just adding more to something that already exists. And so that's how you should really think about using collect. Um, when you're creating a collection from the start where there's no collection to begin with, I typically err on the side of caution and use clear collect. You could use collect, but then you're going to inevitably find yourself in a situation to where you're not actually ever clearing the collection and then at some point in your app you're going to have to initiate it anyway, so you, you're going to have to either clear it or just simply use clear collect and just it resets the table to what you needed to have out of the gate. And then obviously clear is as it sounds. It clears out the collection. There's no more data in the database. So let's go look at the uh, code behind these buttons. Okay, so clear collect. I'm clearing and collecting. And I'm saying here's, a, you know, so first we do clear collect and then you always have to give it a name. And this is the name of your table. Now, this to me, in my opinion, how I just named this in this example is bad uh, naming conventions. I typically have the people that I work with and manage use collections like a prefix. So COL, so that we know it's a collection, my collection, right? And so this is probably better to use, but I'm gone off on a kind of a soapbox. This video is really not about that, but I do want you to at least pause for a moment and consider everything that you create. And also I'm very much a stickler for the tree view and the objects in here, not looking the way that I have them here in these examples. You should explicitly name them because inevitably you're going to want to control or write code against it. And it's really good to write code cleanly so you understand what it is that you're trying to do, which objects you're accessing, and, and why, and having good naming conventions. So anyway, I'll stop my soapbox. I'll put this back so I don't break anything. And you can see that I'm providing uh, multiple rows here, but I'm providing uh, these key value pairs in the form of a record, and that's what these curly braces are. And so I have a integer which doesn't require a code. Uh, a, dang it, doesn't require the double quotes around it because it's not a text. I do want it to be an integer because it's age. And then I have a key value pair of is 21, but I'm assigning a blank value. And you may be like, well, why are you doing that? And why are you showing that in this example? I could have just provided a very easy, simple to use, take the cheap way out column, but I wanted to get you a little more creative in thinking when you're creating your collection. So I put a placeholder value in here. Now, here's something that may or may not be interesting to you. Under the table for the age column, you can see I'm using this item dot age, but for column 21, I'm not using the actual is 21 value. I'm not using the blank value. I'm saying this item dot age greater than 21. It's going to evaluate to a Boolean output or a Boolean expression, right? Because we're using that logic that we covered earlier. 
And as a result of that, when I press this, it's simply going through and saying, is 13 greater than 21? I don't know if you heard me when we went through what I was reading earlier, but I was explicitly saying, you know, is this greater than this? It's this greater than or greater or less than than that. And so this is how you can use this. So don't always think that you need to put a value in the table. If you need to do something or you want to do something later, that's where the blank function is really a good use case. It's just a placeholder so that you don't get an error and it winds up producing a null value essentially. But it's a kind of a creative way of thinking through you know, your data, your data structures and, and how you may do different things. And then for collecting, all I'm doing is just the same thing. Instead of clear collect, I give it the same name so it knows what to essentially append this data to. And the schema needs to be the same. So if I came up with here and put foo here, this is going to create kind of a problem. And so, uh, you know, here, let's do that. 99.9% .9 sure it's going to create a problem. And let's see what happens. If anything, it may actually create another column, but let's see what happens. I've never actually done this. So this value is blank. But let's go over to the table and let's go over to fields and let's see if we have a foo field. And we don't. Okay. So it essentially doesn't error out, which is interesting and good, right? Um, to be honest with you, I've never intentionally tried to break it. So this, we're, I'm doing this live with you. And I love doing this kind of stuff. I love experimenting, pushing it to the limits, and let's try to break the app. Um, and this kind of lets you know the meets and the bounds, and it helps you find interesting things. And that's why I love making these videos, because I'm all the time trying to QA and break stuff. Uh, and so this is the kind of crazy stuff that I do, and I, I have fun at it. So in any event, if you hate doing it, don't worry. I'll create videos for you and let you know the crazy stuff that I do. And if I find something interesting, I'll let you know. Okay, so I've pretty much beaten this video uh, and horse to death, so to speak. This is the last and final one. It's pretty much clean, straightforward English, clear. And then what are we clearing? The name of the collection. So other than that, that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you got some value out of it, and we'll see you in the next one.